Hello everyone, welcome for this brand new part of our twin in which let me share my screen. So to start, this is a new module in this twin which we did not uh, cover hydrogen before for the simple reason that we did we were not working as the energy data, energy data center of the IA on hydrogen data collection. And this is now the case, thanks to our partners from the UN and especially from Eurostat, with whom we have been developing for the last year a brand new uh, annual energy questionnaire regarding hydrogen. And that uh, this questionnaire will be used for this data cycle for the first time. So all of this is current development and especially regarding the methodology. We are developing a new methodology and new points for this new those new technologies that are emerging. Not everything is as ready as we would like to, and there will be development in the next two, three years with new version of those questionnaires. So if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask them. And if you're interested, we have a specific mail address now so that you can ask us uh, things. But to start, uh, let's start with some key hydrogen trends first. So as I would tell you, we are starting as the Energy Data Center to work on hydrogen, but the IEA itself did not start just this year to work on this. Actually, our colleagues, uh, our analyst colleagues, worked on this subject for several years now. And when we were preparing this presentation, they released their new version of the Global Hydrogen Review which is an extensive and free report on the current state of hydrogen technologies and development. So not all of the data are the most up-to-date in this presentation, but I really suggest that you check also this report that is very extensive and very well written by our colleagues. I will uh, show it to you at the end of the, of the presentation. So some key hydrogen trend. So hydrogen is what did we recognize now as an important option for the for climate change tackling and for the in, in the new policies implemented by most of the countries for the objectives to reach net zero emission by 2015 in many countries it implies the implementation of new hydrogen technologies those technologies are pretty large in terms of covering from the energy sources for hydrogen or for the uses of hydrogen in transport or industries, uh, low level uh, low energy intensity industries or high level energy industries, such as iron and steel. But for now, it's important also to keep in mind that all of those technologies are really in project phase or development and hydrogen is not as wide as it, uh, it could be right now. That's why also we started in advance to prepare questionnaires to tackle and collect the data because we need to monitor how those technology evolve and what real impact they will have. Many industries and politics hope that hydrogen will help decarbonize much of the human activities without changing too much the way of life of uh, energy users. And the difficulty being that hydrogen is a fuel that has many different types of sources and shape, and at the same time uh, can, is produced and used in many different industries. So new methodologies were needed to be put in place to work on this. Current uh, demand uh, for hydrogen is around 96 million of tons in 2022 for hydrogen and most of them were, were in industries and refining, which are the traditional uses of hydrogen. Hydrogen being either a co-production of natural gas to produce ammonia and be used as fertilizers or uh, being a by byproduct of oil refining that is reused immediately in the refining process. Just to the horizon of 2030, it is expected to see at least a third of this huge be moved toward other uses than industry and refining to see new development for the need, especially in transport and power generation. All of us are supported right now by ambitious policies and new development by many industrial uh, in the, in the industrial uh, actors. 
Unfortunately, for now, hydrogen is not a clean fuel. Low energy emission of a pollution of hydrogen is very, in as of 2022, is very partial because most, as I told you, most of the hydrogen right now is produced from natural gas in the production of ammonia, which is not a CO2 free process. But especially with the help of electrolyzers, it is, uh, it is hoped that hydrogen could become a far more cleaner fuel and far more useful fuel uh, for for energy production in the uh, in the in countries. And technologies are developing fast since uh, because between 2021, 2022, and 2023, the electrolyzer capacity, electrolyzer manufacturing capacity by has been increased almost two by two on all those years, especially led by China and uh and Europe. Even if in Europe in 2022, 23, the production was a little bit slowed down because of the current uh political and war issues in the eastern borders. But it is expected to see this production of electrolyzer to grow exponentially by the horizon on 2013, leading to cleaner hydrogen being produced. And it's not only a question of production and uh, and demand. It's also uh, if it is also a pro energy community that is expected to be traded, exchanged through the world. There have been a few uh, experiments right now happening between Australia and Japan, organizing some uh, important spots of hydrogen between two, experimenting on this, and also much of the hydrogen right now is being traded through pipelines or in the form of ammonia, which is another compound we'll discuss a little bit later on this. So regarding our methodological concept, I'm just checking the questions to see what they are. Uh, All right, so may Rahi ask to probably after the, um, the presentation during the Q&A, but please use the meeting chat to ask your questions. It will be useful to, to write later. So regarding the key concept, uh, so first definition of what we call hydrogen or what we, uh, of the flow that we'll be covering. So hydrogen, hydrogen is a gas, or less non-toxic, but highly combustible, which is one of the its key technical difficulties right now is that there is a fear of explosion and burning with this fuel, which is highly volatile on that. But at the same time, it is highly energy uh, dense. It is, it's a good energy carrier. And uh, the unit of measure is usually ter a terajoule, that for natural gas, we prefer to use the energy content co compared to the volume of the, ma of the mass, which can vary depending on the conditions where in which you store the gas. And we are considering in our questionnaire right now a gas purity that is at least of 98%. We chose this value because, according to most of our analysts, a gas that will be at a less, lesser level of purity will not be useful or interesting for most of the industries or the energy users. So that's why we focused on that. But the assumption that we have when we talk about hydrogen, it is the, this gas of 19% uh, purity. We try to cover all forms of hydrogen that, uh, that have been produced. So it's either intentional production or byproduct of another activity. And I told you sometimes hydrogen can be a byproduct of refining activity. We want to cover this element also. Um, we are focusing in this new questionnaire on either energy use or non-energy use, because as this is, as both are new technologies being unfolded, it is important for us to capture and cover all of the data right now and try to, est to estimate and assess what are the actual interesting or useful flows and production to be followed. So we need to cover most of them. And we are not doing any distinction in the questionnaire to what we, we could call sometimes clean hydrogen or green hydrogen or brown hydrogen. There's a lot of definition used by lots of analysts and industries. As I told you, we want to cover all of them. What we are not covering is the presence of hydrogens in 
other compounds with three major exceptions that I will detail later. And we are not interested in the intermediary products, which means that if uh, hydrogen is present in just in an intermediary chemical uh, component between transformation of two fuels, we don't want to cover that. We want it as an output, a soldable output, if you want, of a reaction or an activity. The other compounds that we'll be monitoring in the uh, in this questionnaire are ammonia and what we regroup under the name of e-fuels. So ammonia is another chemical component with nitrogen and three hydrogen molecules. It is mostly present as a, so in a solid form, and it's a commodity already exchanged world uh, at a world world level. Its application mostly been in non energy use for chemical and petrochemical fertilizer produ production and etc. It has many interaction with hydrogen, especially it is, it, it is considered as one of the safest transport way for hydrogen through boats or in, in other means. So that's why we want to cover to, to it. If fuels are another new technology being unfolded right now, but not exactly defined in methodical term yet, but that what we include most of the fuel that are the results of a of reaction between CO2 or monoxide or carbon monoxide with hydrogen to produce liquid or solid fuels. And include in this we also include RFNBOs, which are a type of uh, synthetic fuel is uh, used uh, produced from uh, biological sources. This is all linked. We are currently working on um, a, a revision of the classification of energy products, which will include more definition of those. So this will come out uh, at some point to, to be introduced in, with those two. The structure of the uh, this new energy balance with those three uh, main categories of fuels will be since roughly the same as what you will see or you have already seen for the other energy communities with a supply part, a demand part, and in between the statistical differences. The main differences would be that in the production, we have different sources possible than what you can find in the other questionnaires. And also there will be a very important part of the transformation sector because of its interaction of hydrogen with refinery activities, petrochemical sectors, and some other transformations that can uh, occur. We will uh, see that more in detail in a few minutes. The production of hydrogen, we are covering the production from other energy, uh, from other, uh, energy community, so production from natural gas, primary and secondary oil, coal products, or renewable and non-renewable waste, for example. This can be the products or byproducts of a lot of different chemical action and chemical activities, which are detailed here. I will not try to pronounce them. I know they can be a mouth, uh, a mouth hurt. And we are covering the production with or without CCS. CCS being carbon capture and storage, which are new technologies that have been developed and that are right now the main argument uh, when I'm saying right now, I mean in 2022, 2023, many argument from many hydrogen producers to say that hydrogen is cleaner is because its development is in parallel of CCS technology, which allow, which allow a production without too much emission of, uh, of CO2. Another part of the energy production can be from electrolysis. So hydrogen can be produced from electrolysis, which is an activity which is to sum up very roughly means that you make an electric current circulate through water and the ionization of the water will produce hydrogen gas. This is a very rough summary of the of this uh, chemical reaction. Do not quote me on that, but this is roughly what is happening. And in that case, we try to monitor the sources of the electricity used for this electrolysis activity. That will cover you just the use of grid electricity. So that's connected to the overall electricity mix of the country of the, uh, of uh, that is uh, hosting the plant. And also sometimes you will have plants, uh, facilities that are in direct line, which means uh, DL you see in this, uh, in this uh, slide, 
to specific energy sources, renewables, non-renewables, some other not the uh, not fully in that in post categories. We separated nuclear because of some discussion that are happening at several uh, at several political level, especially in Europe, on the classification of nuclear being named uh, low carbon emission sources, clean energy sources, non uh, non fossil, non renewables. It is still in discussion, so that's why we separated nuclear from the rest to be sure to cover everything if needed. Uh, for the production of ammonia and uh, e-fuel, so ammonia is mostly produced from fossil fuels, and currently the main source of it is natural gas, so it is more easy, easier to, pro to process, and we want to cover all the production that is uh, possible from ammonia, so we are covering energy and non-energy purpose, especially if that's for data providers, uh, for data pro for data providers, it to be hard for them to identify this part of ammonia that I produce will be used for energy purposes, and this won't. Most of them cannot produce uh, process that, so we try to cover all of them. And for issues, its production is is expected to be mostly coming from renewables and waste. So that will be where we expect to see most production happening. Um. For the trade, uh, as for other fossil fuels, we are focusing here on the country of origin and destination of the fuel. So we do not in, we are not interested in transit uh, destination in the, the reporting. And uh, currently, most of the fuel to, of the H2 uh, trade is done by pipeline anyway. So two countries connected and mixing either pure hydrogen or mixed with natural gas or uh, biogas in a pipeline to, uh, to transit it. There are few other transportation systems that are using ammonia and methyl situate sand, but those are currently in development and we cannot cover them too much here. Um, transformation, so I already covered it more, uh, most with my production part. Hydrogen can be the source or uh, uh, source from transformation sector or being used in those transformation sectors for the production of gas, of uh, several ammonia or oil products, and of course, electricity when burned. So yeah, almost the easiest process to cover here. And also, as I told you, in refinery can be used as a component to produce other uh, oil products for energy and non-energy purposes. So I try to list them here. And if you have doubt, I'm coming to, to that. We have already published with a partner from Eurostat a reporting instructions where you will find most of the definition of what is covered and not covered with this uh, this new questionnaire. I think I'm already reaching the end, yeah, the end of the time I had to present you. When you will see the slide, when you will receive them, you have you will have here most of the presentation of the different tables in this new energy questionnaire and how we fill them. Currently, it is not yet available on the website. We are still working to finalize it, and it should be available hopefully in a few weeks on the website. But the instructions are already out, so you should be able to consult them if you if you want. Just to sum up briefly the current questionnaire, um, we have a first table on indigenous production. So taking into account all I've to, uh, say, to, told you before, Transformation energy sector and losses, which will cover uh, all of those. Keeping in mind that losses will, impl will include the transmission, the distribution, and the transformation losses. So we are covering all of those in different items to try to have as much finesse as we can on the, day on the data. And that keeping in mind also that we are currently working on another project of a revision of the petrochemical. Uh, report the sector reporting for the data, which would clarify much in the coming years. So another development that is coming on those data. Uh, final energy consumption is pretty straightforward. It's that we are covering energy and non-energy use here. To, to, as I told you, we are trying to really see what are the uses of those new technologies. So that's why we are covering most of those uses. And that will be it. 